Welcome to Great Talk and Entertainment. I'm your host, KJ, and this is the podcast where I review movies and TV shows from all your favorite superheroes, including Marvel Comics, DC Comics, and much more. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Great Talk and Entertainment official channel. Now let's go, baby! Welcome to my new segment called The Munchie Hours. And this is where I go. It's a full-length episode for the podcast slash YouTube channel. And this is for the people who's got the munchies. It don't matter what day, what time. If you got the munchies, this is the place to go and listen to. So, we're going to talk about movies, rumors, about what may happen in upcoming films and TV shows. We're going to talk about upcoming Marvel films, DC comic films, and other films. I'm also got some uh, movies and shows I would like to review in non-spoiler. So don't worry, a lot of this one will be a non-spoiler review, anything I discussed. And I will let you guys know when I do some spoiler reviews in the head of the future because there may be some conversations, especially when we talk about the superhero films. But I will let you guys know in that. So... Y'all been warned. I let y'all know. Now, if you have the munchies or if you need to puff, 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 pass to yourself, to your friends, to your loved ones, whether it's your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your husband, your best friend, whoever, do what you got to do. Light one up. Come back. And if you can remember, because sometimes I ever forget, hit the thumbs up, share this video, share this. So let other people know so I can help this channel grow so I can have more audience, more subscribers, and I can give you the best entertainment place here on Great Talk and Entertainment Official Channel here. Now let's go. Now as I start the first segment, we're going to I'm going to do my four movies and films that are non-superheroes first. And then we'll get into the meat of the matter, which is the superhero era genre, I should say, which is including Marvel and DC Comics and some Star Wars. Let's not forget Star Wars. Let's not forget Godzilla and King Kong. Let's not ever, ever forget the Power Rangers. And let's definitely not forget Sonic the Hedgehog, Super Mario, Knuckles. Let's not forget about them. But let's start off with some non-animation, superhero, video game, Star Wars-like films. Let's just get into some ones that I feel like I think you guys should definitely check out. Give a chance if you have not. Because these are some really good shows that I think deserve a chance to be watched. And some of these are limited series. And there's one that's just one feature film. So... Let's go. Let's start with Griselda. Now, this is starring Sophia, Sophia Vergara, who plays Griselda. And I thought that was a very interesting choice because I just remember her from the uh, funny show that used to be on the USA Network, probably still is, Family Modern show, which was is a really funny show, definitely a classic. I would definitely check that out if you have not seen that. I'm sure it's on a streaming service or on your cable. But anyway, I was just saying I really like that that they chose her. And watching this, every time I was watching this series, I just felt like I was watching Modern Family just because of her accent. And I know she can't help it, but but she really, to me, nailed this show. Like She really did a great job, and I really enjoyed it. This is a show, and it's only a limited series, so there's really not, like, a lot, but it, it had, there's an ending, like, there's no continuous of it, like, so it, it it's a straightforward beginning to end type show, and what I really liked about this is this show kept me on the edge of my seat, and this is the type of show, the way they formatted this is that you're kind of gonna well not you can you can catch yourself kind of rooting for her because you feel bad because her reasoning is 
I it's a good reason if you're a parent. If you're a parent and you understand when it comes to protecting your kids, especially single mothers, right? But then they also have this sh- on this show that it has a woman who who's a cop, and the name of the woman is June Hawks is the character, but it's played by Juliana Martinez, and I hope I pronounced the first name and last name correctly, and if not, I apologize. And what these two characters is you'll notice in this show in a non-spoiler way just to make that clear i'm not spoiling anything is these two have a parallel story of just struggling of just being a female in this era in that time because of the fact is on june hawks the character she the 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 detective she she's trying to tell everybody like she believes that the this this is a woman who's the drug lord not it's not a male and all the male in the, the police department of Miami just laugh at her and dismiss her because they don't believe a woman can be a drug lord you know can be a boss and that's just something that at that time and era males felt that way and women even felt that way and believed that and so she was very like outcast now same thing with Griselda nobody believed a woman who was just a prostitution because she used to prostitute the way this show is explaining it could ever be a a drug lord right now What I thought was really cool about that, because without spoiling it, they do come across, these two characters do come across each other's path. But just imagine it in a, let me use some superhero examples. It's like Batman and the Joker are meeting for the first time. Now, the character June Hawks, Hawkins, is the is Batman and Griselda is the Joker. And no matter what they try to do, these two always find a way to one up each other. And whether Griselda's getting it or June Hawkins is getting it, they're they're always one up each other or one a you know, sometimes you'll see it in each episode One's 20 steps ahead and and the other's 20 steps back. And you see this dynamic duel just going at each other in a way. And I think it's very unique because, again, they're both females. And all these powerful dominant males in this show are, are very untouchable. But they do the unthinkable and they succeed in their own ways. And another thing I like about this is we see this character, Griselda, just, we see her look powerful, but we also see her fold. Because in each episode, you know, Griselda does give away these speeches, you know, this hoorah, rah, rah, rah speech, where she's motivating people, getting people pumped up. And you see all these male and females stay loyal to her. And they're willing to do anything for her. Same thing with the character June Hawkins. You slowly see people of the males in the uh, Miami Police Department. uh, From detectives to, you know, people who... Do get on a computer and search up and try to collect all the data they can and connect each clue and evidence together and try to pinpoint how to get her, how to catch her, right? And you start seeing these two females succeed in their own ways. And they both, again, they both show how they both fold. And they're just trying. They're both trying to 
you know, dominate this, the, this quote unquote, a man's world type. And it's very gruesome and brutal and dark. Like obviously Griselda is famous for selling the, uh, the boogaloo, the jungle fever, the, uh, the white snow, the white powder. I'm not going to say its actual name just in case, but it's a narcotic drug. And the way she gets it to Columbia, to Miami, is crazy. And it's very unique. And I, again, just before I go any more deeper in this dive of reviewing it, is I'm not basing on the facts and fictional of it. I'm just saying as this show, I think this is a show you would really like. And I think it's very interesting facts. And if you just look on it, because I wasn't around, I wasn't even born yet. When this, uh, uh the show actually happened on based on true events that actually happened in real life, obviously. But I think for what it's shown, it's really cool to watch this. And this is one of best, one of Netflix's best work of of their original content. And I think the whole cast did a wonderful job as well because the each cast member really brought this these characters to life and I just really enjoyed it. And there's a lot going on, but and it's just the episodes are long but it's short episodes. I can't remember how many. I want to say maybe six episodes at least. I want to say it's six episodes, but pretty long. But they give a very good detail. And again, we just see how all these characters involve. And we see the worst of the worst and the best and the best on each side. But it's just really exciting to watch. And I think it has a lot of potential. Now, obviously, they probably won't continue on because, again, this show is based off of true events of the godmother, Griselda, in real life. And, you know, again, there's no continuation, but I thought this was a really good show that you should definitely check out. And I would like to see Sof Sophia Vergara I just think I want to see her more in films like this, like action pack, serious drama. I, I mean, she's a talented actress and I, she's a beautiful woman, obviously. But I would love to see more of her doing shows like this, maybe more crime scenes, maybe superheroes. Like, you know, I think there's some there's some DC characters and Marvel characters that she would do amazing in. And I, I think she, <laughs> I think she can pull off some characters like, I don't know yet, but I, I'll, I'll make a, a, I'll talk about that later on in a different episode. But I definitely think you guys should check this show out. And again, this, it's just, it has a lot, it's very intense and, and it, and it keeps your interest. Like, like even in the dialogue part where it's a lot, a lot of dialogue and it's moving slow, it still keeps your attention because now you're just curious of what she's saying, what she's thinking, how she's feeling, you know, it's, it's just all come together and you just, you just don't want to miss nothing because everything they show on each episode, you just don't want to miss every detail of it because it's a lot going on, but it does keep your attention span on a point. Like, you won't be on your phone, trust me. So, if I had to give this a 1 out of 10, I'm definitely giving this a 10 of this like this. Good. So, now we'll go on to the next one. So, before we start, if you need to puff, 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 light it up, go ahead. And let's get on to the next one. Now, the next one on that's also on Netflix is the TV series Fool Me Once, starring Michelle Keegan as Maya and Richard R. McTang as Joe and Adil Akhtar, who plays the detective. And this is just about 
uh, the character Maya, her husband gets shot and she plays a, the, the character Maya is a veteran. She's a soldier who had a, uh, a tragic that happened during her time as an active soldier. Uh, but that she, she got discharged and it's been haunting her for a while. And it's been a mystery until we get, you get closer to the, at least the last two of the episodes, but without, and again, this is a non-spoiler. I'm not going to spoil anything, but it's just, she's the mysteries is who shot her husband because of the fact that in this show, it's about that her friend gave her a nanny cam to watch her daughter because she's now a widow and she hires a nanny to watch her kid while she goes to work or do whatever she needs to do. Right. And on that nanny cam, she sees a familiar face with her daughter, which would be her dead husband, Joe. And this is a psychological thriller. It takes a very dark turn, but it's an amazing show with a lot of excitement. This one's very action packed for a show like for a for a widow slash wife to do the things she does and 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 fighting and solving mysteries it's, it's just just a really fun episode to watch and it does keep you on the edge of your seat and this one is you know like for me i like psychological thrillers and i'll tell you what i never get them right i never get them right because i'm just i try to get good at it but i'm not and the reason why is to, I would say about last year, I started really enjoying psychological thrillers, but this wasn't the show. I, I forget, but there, there was a tons that I, I started watching last year. And so that, that really sparked my intrigue to watch more psychological thrillers. And at the time this year, Netflix started releasing more. And this one's a 2024 film obviously but i really just enjoyed it so much I, me me and my friend we started picking shows to watch together because i have a friend who just he just can't sit down and watch like all the marvel films in order it cuz they're we're just busy people in life obviously in our in our regular jobs and but you know i dedicate myself more to these and dig deeper dive in shows so but I finally found we finally found shows common grounds to watch these series. So as my friend was watching this, I was watching this and we both just enjoyed the fact. And what we learned about it is what this show. Each episode leads you. And when you think you figure it out, it takes a hard left turn and you just hit the wall like, oh, I didn't see that coming. And this show on, it just has so much going on. There's about, I would say, three different stories that lead up to one big story about the big mystery of who killed her husband, Joe, and why this person did it, what was the reason and cause. And it, it takes you on a wild ride. And this show has takes place in a, in another country which is uh Brit Britain so it's a British film and well show I should say but this thing has everything in it and what's really interesting like for episode one this is where you learn at the end of the episode you start seeing all these characters seem kind of sketchy and then you kind of you kind of have to guess is that really sketchy is that is this person devious is this person a liar and the one thing i think people are going to be really interesting in is the detective of some of the detect he he has some issues and he's going through and this makes you not trust the author and there's different authors or narrative narrative authors who are guiding through which is just the characters on each episode of the show, right? And what was really amazing about that is you you gonna end up rooting for people you wouldn't expect. You you'll they'll think, oh, I'll never root for this person. Then you start rooting, and then, and then you're just gonna start believing them. Then you realize, wow, they broke your trust. 
it's that type of show. But it's a, it's a it's fun, and I definitely would want you guys to check this out because my God, it it was just fun to watch, and I think this I think there should be more, but I honestly it's it's a limited series, so it's probably not. But what they did is at least that from the beginning there is an ending to this story of the whole plot where if they don't do a season two at least the way the show ended it, it's a true ending there's no second guessing and there's no there's no what ifs there's no there's no plot twist you know each character did what they did and how it ended like it's it's a perfect story like it's a show that again beginning to end and if they left it alone it'd still be uh, a great show to watch in different later on in life basically and i would recommend a lot of you guys to check this show out uh fool me once i j it just has just has a really good storytelling and the cast did a really amazing job of uh, portraying these characters they definitely uh let me let me look how many episodes there were there is eight episodes and each eight episodes they're pretty long episodes each episode is like an hour long and i really what's really cool about this that i wanted to point out in all eight episodes by the time you get to episode eight every character that you've seen that's could be suspicious or a suspect they have gave each character layers upon layers upon layers where you truly understand each particular character and what their motive is what their lifestyle is what they're struggling and how they overcome certain things and I, especially the character Maya she she's she she's a she's a baddie she she's a tough broad like she can she can go and you really appreciate everything she's doing and it, it's a there's a huge plot twist on each character and i think it's well deserved and it makes sense too see a lot of psycho psychological thriller shows sometimes the ending just doesn't make sense are you just confused this one if you if you if you just let it simmer through your thought you'll say wow you know what this this makes this definitely makes sense of how this all ended and i i would recommend anybody to watch this one like especially watch it when you're stoned like it's more fun to me personally so if i had to give this show i'd give it a 10 as well like it had it it's really a, it's a perfect story plot like a good storytelling and I think all the cast members did great. And honestly, I I wouldn't even want a season two just because I feel like Netflix would 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 ruin the story of how it all ended. So that's just it. But now let's go switch from Netflix to a Hulu. Now I watched the movie Suncoast which is now streaming on Hulu. It's it's a really great uh, film, I would say. And this film is starring Nico Parker, who plays Doris, and Woody Harrison, who plays the protester. And that character's name is Paul. And then Christine, or Christine, who's played by Laura Kennel, plays the mother of, of Doris. And... This is just about a film inspired by the director Laura Chin, who had a life experience of just of um, during the Terry Shaver uh, incident back in two thousand five, and I hope I said that person's last name. And this is just about a teen, this teen girl Doris, whose brother, who's in a special uh, facility. Uh, because he, he he's in a situation where uh the medical uh reason is you know he's on his deathbed he's like a vegetable and you know this 
is there, you know, at some point they're going to pull the plug or let him uh, pass away peacefully, hopefully. And again, this takes place back in the early 2005 in Florida. And there's like a, a storm around this uh, whole uh, situation. And it makes it very difficult to get to the, uh, the special facility because of the protesters. And this this takes like a, a very teenage view, a teenager's view of being in a situation and her mother is, you know, very stressed out and worried and they're both grieving differently, obviously, where you see the mother, you know, kind of distance herself from her daughter and is more worried about her son who, who who's a, like a vegetable, basically. And it has it's, it could be a very glooming story but it does have these uplifting moments and funny moments to kind of keep the audience spirit up and you i think each cast member did a great job to keep to to make you understand these characters and what was going on and there were some cringe moments with the teenage girl doris because you know, it, it made you kind of think of your of it'll it'll make you think of your time as a teenager because there's like teenage things like peer pressure. Um, in this film, you know they, you know Doris has the whole house to herself, so her and her teen her new teenage friends throw a little party and they're trying to do it secretly and not get caught by the adults. Moments well, like this, and there's some type of like. Uh, I got, a, I got, I want, I want to know, is a storm or a hurricane or a tsunami going on in Florida at this time too in this movie, and so you know all the houses are kind of like border up, and you know it's very dangerous, obviously. So, uh, this film just it just talked about this, but we see again this is about grief. This is about trying to move on. This is trying to express how a person feels and you're seeing from an adult version of the mother and the uh, teenage version of of Doris and they have their own way but it does have that mother daughter feel but it also has that brother and sister feel story where you know she's the little sister and he's the big brother and you know, it's supposed to be the other way around, but now it's the little sister taking care of the big brother, and it's very stressful, and there's some financial issues of struggle, and, you know, just sometimes teenage kids don't understand, or a teenager, but you, you see the dynamic of it, and I would say it's it's a great show. I really like it. I, I, I wish there was more uh, Woody Harrison scenes in this film, but he did just he's there but it doesn't just feel like he's getting a lot of screen time in this film but I do enjoy it uh, overall um, I think it, it, it's a it's a tear jerker film like it, it'll tug your emotions and your heart and because you just want to see the best and a happy ending but that's just not the case with this film but story the plot well told made sense has a beginning to end as well and just to see this go down it, it was just fun to see this but we do get that family bond and we see Doris make some really good friends who at first you would think they're like another version of the mean girls and because there's always a guy or a boy who's involved and you know but they come together and they show true friendship because there's times where I'm like oh is this going to take a dark turn like are these are these students are going to bully her but you'd be surprised how much they actually care for her and they grow a real friendship because she's very sh this character is very shy you know teenager shy basically and you know she's a little embarrassed of what is going on her house is not you know rich 
that her life is not perfect. There's no mom and dad together. It's just a single mother taking care of two kids and, and the mom's just stressing out and there's just a lot going on. And I think this, this has not a big important message, but also it's, it's a film. It's a feel good film at the end. And it's just fun to watch the characters grieve over this. And I think it's just really cool to watch. And it's something I would recommend you to check out because this is a film that you don't have to watch all the time, but I think it's a film that you can just sit down and watch. Uh, like if you're just trying to watch before you have to go to bed because you might have work or some short, or maybe it's just a, uh, a chill chill Sunday and you just want to watch a movie all day. I, I'd recommend a film like this. And... This just it's not action packed. It's very a lot of dialogue, but I think each actor and actress really did very well. And uh, obviously, Woody Harrison, all the scenes, even though he was in, there's only he's only in a few scenes, but he did knock it out of the park. And I I just enjoyed him. I wish again, I wish there was more scenes with him, but it's all good because you know he's he's probably one of my favorite actors. And I definitely would recommend to watch this. And I this is this this film again. It's anybody can watch together. It's not R rated. It's not too mature. It's not really like like some unrated teen scene, unnecessary scene. It's just typical teenage stuff, sneaking out, trying to take a sip of alcohol, but not like you. It's not like Euphoria type. It's just very simple, but. Again, it just mains focus on Doris and her life and how she's trying to struggle through this. And, you know, she's becoming of age uh, in this scene. And, you know, just you're just hoping that her and the mother can get back together and be mother and daughter, strong bond, and look out and... It's just really, it does have a positive message too. So it's, it's a really good film. And I, I just enjoy these, like these like movies and shows that I have reviewed in non-spoiler way. It's very rejuvenating. It helps me get better at watching like the, my Marvel DC films and stuff. But I would definitely watch these. I mean, great storytelling. So one out of 10, I'm giving this a 10. Now let's, uh, Roll another one up, let's puff, puff, pass, whatever you got to do. And now let's get into the next segment, the MCQ News and Rumors. Let's go. Now let's start off with the new teaser trailer for Deadpool 3, which within that trailer, it showed the actual name title of the actual film is called Deadpool and Wolverine. In this trailer, this obviously starts off with as we see Ryan Reynolds who who plays Deadpool and this whole plot to me from the, this teaser trailer for the obvious things that are easy to point out is the TVA are involved he's getting introduced to all the other Marvel characters of the MCU it's it's either before or after Loki who becomes the uh, who becomes the one of He Who Remains? He's the one that takes over the TVA, and obviously Hugh Jackman as Wolverine again, and just the fact that we're getting Wolverine with the classic yellow and blue, and the I think the the main thing too is what's the what's the story of him getting to the MCU. Well, as far as just the trailer, I thought it was really exciting to see and it looks very action packed and it does obviously it's R rated Deadpool film. So it's just like Deadpool one and two and, and, and that's very exciting for the Deadpool fans and just fans of superhero movies of course. And and I, I like the fact that they're sticking to it and I like the way that 
uh, Marvel Studios has found a way to do R-rated films or shows within this whole multiverse or just the universe of Marvel Studios, basically. And I like that they're, you know, sticking to the the Ryan Reynolds, like, punchline jokes that he that he's famous for. And that's why he, he was like the fan cast of Deadpool, basically. But I I did like that. My my only concern is I hope that there is an actual plot. There's an actual story to this that not like a film where I just don't want it to be so much of a fan service. Like I I hope we get some cool cameos, but I hope they don't overdo it because I feel like let's hold some back so it can lead up and be more anticipated for particular Marvel characters to interact with Deadpool and Wolverine. I I hope that we don't just get the X-Men, all the X-Men in there. I I hope that they keep it to a minimum of two like X-Men characters of the members of that group. And I the ones I think that should be important uh, and just and you know what I'm just gonna exclude Charles Xavier because we we kind of if you've seen the uh, Ms uh, or the Marvels film which is now on Disney Plus that you'll know and and this is a spoiler but we know that Captain Rambo is in the uh, another multiverse where. Her mom is alive, but she's part of the X-Men. And we've seen Beast that's played by Kelsey Grammer. And he obviously name-dropped uh, Charles Xavier. And so we know he exists. So just for that, and I just wanted to think out the box, is the minimum of two members of the X-Men characters, so basically excluding Charles Xavier, that I think it's gonna I think it should be Gambit and Rogue. And just just for the fact that these are characters that are not very they're not like Cyclops, who's somebody who goes by the books, by the rules, you know. He doesn't just uh like freestyle and wanna fight, you know. He he follows the rules, like he won't break the rules to achieve the thing. You know, that's just Cyclops' personality and, and, and who he is. So, And that's very common within the comic books. That's not a, a spoiler for that. But I think just seeing Gambit and Rogue, these two kind of are like rule, rule breakers. They don't, you know, stand in the clean line. They kind of both have a, they'll both kind of can be shady Sometimes, sometimes they'll play dirty to get what they want. And that's just how kind of Wolverine and, and Deadpool, of course, is in a way. Like, you know, they're going to do what sees fit. Like, it, it, you know, pretty much, you know, like Punisher. You know, he he's the guy that just doesn't. So that's why I think it's it'd be cool to see those two characters. And that's what I think that they're going to lead up to. I just believe that uh, Rogue and Gambit could be the two first ones you can kind of introduce now in the MCU just because of the... Uh, I just feel like those characters weren't really shown a lot in the X-Men films from Fox. I, I, I mean, not all, I should say, but the first two. The first two... But, you know, I feel like Origins, and, or not Origins, but the cl year class and Dark Phoenix was more about Cyclops and uh, Mystique and, and Jub uh, Jubilee, not Jubilee, but uh, Jean Grey. So I really think that uh, Rogue and, and Gamut would be the safest ones to go with. And I would work with those more. That so that's why I think that they will do that way because of that reason. Plus, I always felt like these two particular characters 
should have had a solo film like during the Fox era of producing X Men films. Like I understand Wolverine is the popular uh, X Men member. I uh, want well, just one of them, but I also believe that Rogue and Gambit have a huge fan base. So that's why I really think that the MCU would and probably should do solo films. So I would want them to introduce those two characters in this uh, Deadpool and Wolverine film. Now, now all the Easter eggs are just reference or tributes that they're teasing that could happen in this film. The, 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 the main one that I've seen and that everybody has been kind of really talking about is when Deadpool's on the ground right before Wolverine comes in and stabs him with his claws, we see like this comic book or maybe a page of the, or one of the, I want to say it's the original front artwork for the front cover of Secret Wars, but that was in there right next to Deadpool. I noticed that there's a scene where they're somewhere where you see the Fox Century uh, statue logo that you would see in every film. It's like the dun 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 dun, dun like that. And it says Fox 20th Century. We see like it destroyed and kind of buried or shoved into the ground. And obviously they're hinting like a the Fox universe, the Marvel's or the Fox X Men Fox universe, whatever they call it. And because obviously Disney now owns, owns it and they did call it 21st Century. Now instead of Fox 21st Century, but. I think there there's some way that they're gonna canonize these characters or kill off a certain universe. So that's that's an Easter egg to the Secret Wars as well. And then the third one that I saw, and this is the one I I just wanted to discuss because there's a lot. There's probably like 50, 50 Easter eggs in this one teaser trailer. But the third and final one that I want to bring up is in this trailer we see like you know, the Deadpool gloves and guns and they're and they're having a shoot up but all we see is the hands. But if you really look at them and pause it, they don't look like male hands. They look like female hand hands. So in theory the Easter egg for this is that I think that they're gonna they're hinting a the lady Deadpool or the female Deadpool should would probably be introduced in this. Which that would make sense, I think. There, I mean, because it's rumored that Taylor Swift's in it, but I, I mean, I've been told and read articles and watch a lot of videos where they, they say she could be one of these, uh, not so familiar characters, but it's like a pop artist who's a mutant. I forget her name, but uh, it's always been rumored that Taylor Swift could be playing that just because she's an artist. But I wouldn't be surprised if she would play uh, a female Deadpool. Maybe maybe a variant, or she could be the main one that everybody like knows and loves through comic books. But I wouldn't be surprised. There is another female actress that's rumored that's in this film. I forget her name as well, but it's an unknown, uh, an unknown character or a, a secret character that they don't want to let the world know that this is the character that this particular actress is playing. So it could be the one, and I, I forgot her name, and I just couldn't, I uh, just couldn't find enough research to find that name. But uh, let me know in the comments below. But there is that idea. So those are the three Easter eggs that I saw. Because, one, why did they put the uh, Secret War uh, comic book, or at least the front page of it, the cover of it, in that trailer? Like, is it... Because in theory, that could be mean, like, this could lead up to Avengers Secret Wars. Same thing, like I said about Lady uh, Deadpool, of it could be Taylor Swift or somebody else. But from, my, from the view of it, it does look like female hands from that uh, scene it's just where she has this one characters holding two uh, different guns and having a shootout basically 
So that's why I think. Now, I have two theories. I have a, I call it my logical theory, just based off, stay within the realms of that teaser trailer. And then I have my far fetch um, theory that I want to share. So I'll just start with the uh, logical theory, just basing off, coming up the theory, just basing off this uh, teaser trailer. So. My first theory is on who is the main antagonist slash villain. And my theory is it's going to be Charles Xavier's forgotten sister, uh, Cassandra Nova. And she's basically the like powerful version times two of him. And she has credible abilities. And I think I that would make sense. So let me just give you explain who this character is for those who don't know, and then I'll explain why I think she's the main villain of this film. So in comic books, she debuted in the new X Men in like the year two thousand and five, and the thing that you're gonna know about her in comic books or just read about people make videos about her, but is that her origin starts with like her and her brother Charles Xavier and their mother's womb and they were battling to the death literally and obviously Charles Xavier won but she's not they don't consider her human they consider her spiritual like an alien and but she's a mutant so that's that's the way they're going to portray it in comic books. Obviously, they're going to they're going to change that up a little bit in the live action. And they they don't do a lot of stuff with her, but she to me that she can do the same abilities and a little bit more of Charles Xavier where she can you know she can change people's whole mind and memories and past and like brainwash them without even struggling versus like Charles Xavier can like never do that like he's he, he one he's he that's just not in his heart and two he's just not powerful enough to do that but her sister could like she could she can change reality like without actually changing reality she just can just have she can she can like she's so powerful she can take about over uh, thousands upon thousands of people and change their whole mind and have them believe that this is their whole life and not be it that's what i meant by changing reality like she's that powerful and and just know this like professor x has to get in a in a like a room and use a machine made helmet to amplify his telepathic like powers to search for other mutants. His sister don't. She don't even need to do that. She's that powerful. Where like she can like she can like imagine she using her powers of telepathic. She can create energy, grab somebody, rip any ligaments off their bodies, kill them like and she's hard, hard to kill. Like, you can snap her neck and she'll just reproduce herself. The only way you're going to have to kill her is, like, you literally got to shoot her. And that's so... So keep that in mind, right? So my theory, and just going based off this trailer and just seeing, like, how I feel like you, we see a, the back of somebody's head who's bald, which uh, Cassandra Nova is, is bald like her brother. And she's wearing a suit, but it looked more female-like. That's why. And it's in the trailer. So that's that was my theory. This is just my theory. I, I think she's going to be part of it. And I think they may use her instead of, like, Kang the Dynasty until, you know, with the Jonathan Major situation and maybe finding a new actor to play that role. They got this uh, person, this character, Cassandra Nova, to be the big bad villain in Secret Wars because maybe because she's somebody in a character in the X-Men comic books where she's going to destroy mutants 
and she's going to destroy everybody else and change the way how mutants should live. And so we get a little bit more out of it, but it from just that trailer and it shows me that like that that's what I think because again I think Marvel has to obviously sh- uh shift the story because of the Jonathan Major situation and I think Deadpool Wolverine film can start this because you know they need a big bad villain at the moment unless unless they found a way to keep Kane the Conqueror involved I don't know but I I think people would enjoy it and this is a character that you know is not trying to be the hero it, she's kind of like she's ready to watch the world just burn she don't have like a purpose but she just wants to pretty much watch the world burn like that's not what Thanos wants to do and that's not what King the Conqueror wants to do so it would give them time to refix that story and give us something to till they get to it like the the actual main Avenger film I know they got multiple ones coming out from Kang Dynasty Avenger Secret War and but Maybe, maybe since with the again the John of the Major situation, I believe that they had to shift the plans a little bit, change the story, and go with another character as a complete. So that's why I think that they're they put that in that teaser trailer. So that's just one theory. My far fetched theory, and it's very it's very far fetched, but I have a theory that they're gonna introduce Doctor Doom just based off the uh when Marvel decided to drop a an uh a graphic art of the Fantastic Four with the official cast members of the Fantastic Four and it was just pretty ironic, you know, they dropped the dropped the Deadpool teaser trailer on the Super Bowl and dropped this uh photo on Valentine's Day. And then obviously this is where I get in the next topic is the Fantastic Four as well. But back to my second theory is just because of that, I think it's based like there could be a possibility Doctor Doom could be introduced, which that would give us the Fantastic Four. But now I'm not saying that it's going to explain or show the actual Fantastic Four, but I think Doctor Doom is going to be shown first and that leads up to the introduction to the Fantastic Four. So either he's going to help destroy his multiverse and land in the MCU, Earth-616, and this is how they do it. This is the movie to pull that off. Because maybe maybe that's who Deadpool is was getting kidnapped by the TVA so he, they can help the TVA catch Doctor Doom. That's just one far-fetched theory. So, which leads us to topic number two. Like I said, the Fantastic Four. Now, the cast members are as I'll just go in the beginning. Uh, as Pedro Pascal will play Mister Fantastic. We have Vanessa Kirby as Sue Storm slash the Invisible Woman, and then we have Joseph Quinn as Johnny Storm the uh Mr. Flamon, the human torch himself. And then we have actor slash comedian Eben Moss Backrack. He is playing the rock, the thing himself, Ben Grimm. Now there is a lot of Easter eggs in there, but the one I just want to talk about is the magazine that Ben Grimm, the 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 thing himself is having an old classic magazine of the magazine called Life, and this was the 1963 magazine. And that kind of indicates that in the Marvel studio is they're confirming in a way, maybe, just maybe, we're not sure, this is just a teaser photo. But if they existed in the MCU during Phase 1, then the theory could be like this. So... In the comic books, the origin is they get this like radioactive uh, thing accident that happened in outer space. 
Now, imagine that, but then imagine they just added the fact that they got sucked in or snapped away or absorbed into another multiverse, into another realm. And they've been gone since the 1960s, and now they're just, they found a way back to their universe from their Earth, which is, as Marvel has make it coined it, Earth 616, that this could be the reason why and how they get back. I think it would have something to do with the blimp, the snap by Thanos. And I think that brought them back. So they, I think it could. Like, I think that the snap made it caused it to when, when like Bruce Banner said, bring everything back, back to normal. Maybe that helped the Fantastic Four get home. I don't know, but I just feel like they're just going to say it that the reason why you didn't see them or never heard of them because they've been missing since the 1960s and they were trapped into another multiverse, into another realm or another planet maybe, and they've been living their life differently. That's what I think. That's what I think that's going to happen is they're some way just trapped and they found a way back. And I don't and it obviously connects to the multiverse and all that, but that's the only way I can think. But it from this teaser there of the photo is that they've been existed in since phase one. Just by the retro look. And it's just a drawing. We're not I'm not hundred percent for sure until I actually get a trailer. Or set photo leaks, whatever. But that's the only way I'm going to know about that. But what I think is about this, too, I think with the Deadpool movie coming out, and now everybody's hyped up for next year's, like, the Fantastic Four, is that these two movies, as they say, could save the MCU of just the lack of quality and just, good shows I mean lot, I mean there's been a lot of Disney plus shows where you know people have made it clear they're not a fan of that one or they didn't like it, and they like the other ones and and that just has to do because the fact that we're just so used to like Iron Man Captain America and Thor and all that and we're not getting a lot of it like people didn't like Thor Love and Thunder because they wanted the serious Thor. Or people didn't like She-Hulk. But. Because it just wasn't Hulk. You know. Or like. People didn't like. Secret. Uh, Secret Invasion. Or people just don't like the Marvels. Or Captain Marvel. But I think. What it is. Is just. That. We just. We just like what we used to naturally organically became a fan of the reason why we like Marvel Studio films is because of the phase ones and phase twos basically and honestly I I think these two films will rejuvenate that but I also think like Marvel Studios biggest struggle to me and I don't think it's a negative I think sticks one of their their challenges to succeed in and conquer is is making these like new Marvel characters not new Marvel characters but introducing Marvel characters that are maybe not so mainstream popular and just trying to show the world like there's other Marvel characters that are as great as an Iron Man movie or comic book and etc and there's other Marvel characters that have unique stories that you may be a fan of, and that's their challenge. And that's just something they have to, again, conquer and, and succeed in. Because, you know, Marvel's more than just Iron Man and Spider Man and Captain America. You know, there's people who want to see a solo film of the Hulk, which is a character they should, and I hope one day they can get through all these legal issues with that from them stopping from not them letting them do that I hope they can fix that and get that all cleared up to have those solo films but I also think like 
they're not making enough episodes. They're not making enough seasons for some of these shows to have people grow and like these characters. It just seems like they're not fully invested in telling more stories of those particular characters from those Disney Plus shows. Like, like I do hope there's a She-Hulk season two, and I do hope there's a Moon Knight season two. But I think these are characters that we got to learn and grow and love and how to build them up to interact with like a Deadpool, a Blade, uh, a Captain America, uh, Sam Wilson's, uh, to Bucky Barnes, to Nick Fury, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Like we just, they need to figure that out and build on those characters and tell those stories. And, you know, they need to give us at least 10 or 20 episodes a season next time. Like, just, I think they just need to be more committed because these are great characters that I think people would enjoy as a show or a movie. And I think they can do a lot and be as successful as Iron Man 1 or Avengers Endgame and Spider Man um, No Way, uh, No Way Home. I just, that's what I truly believe. Like, I don't, I'm not giving up on these characters. And there's other Marvel characters like that should be shining right now and that should be getting their own Disney Plus series or solo film. But that's what I think they should really focus on. Like, because that's that's the issue. Once that issue goes away, people will be more accepting and feel like, okay, even though I don't, I'm not. They, they need to learn to be more excited about Marvel Studio and what they're going to offer to have that same feel when they saw, like, Iron Man 1. And they can still get that same feeling with new characters. And that's, I think that's just the battle between Marvel Studios and the fans. And and that, and that's that just comes with what the type of films they make. So it's an obvious challenge, is what I'm saying as well. So that's why I feel like Deadpool and Wolverine in the Fantastic Four film will rejoice that and then I think again they have to go back to that main challenge is making us feel like that with all these new characters that they're introducing to the mainstream audience so that's what I just think about that but thank you guys so much and I hope you enjoyed these uh, full link of the munchy hours I hope you had a good smoke out Thank you so much for listening to my stuff. Please share this with your friends, your friends, your, your family, your loved ones, whoever. And definitely don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Great Talking Entertainment Official channel. And definitely hit that notification button so you can always stay updated with all my latest content. Thank you and peace out.